The next major hurdle in the race for the next governor of Massachusetts is just about a month away, the Massachusetts Republican Convention. And among those vying for the job is businessman Chris Doty, who spent 30 plus years building and growing a metal manufacturing company before diving into his first run for office earlier this year. He joins me now. Chris, a pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, Jim, thanks so much. Why do you want this job and why are you qualified? You know, I want to make the state more affordable. I've been here for 30 years. I have heard it from the citizen, from uh, employees at my own company. I've heard it from those that I work with in my community. And uh, it's just become so expensive to live here and also for our businesses. You've acknowledged you have no political experience, a ton of business experience. If a politician who was successful said, I'd like to come run your business. I've never run a business. I have no business experience. Would you consider him or her for that job? Yeah, you know, the when I look at the job description of a governor, I've been doing it for 30 years, uh, building teams and organizing and problem solving, uh, budgets, complex budget issues. I think the, the responsibilities of a governor are very simple, very similar to running uh, an enterprise like mine. So uh, the uh, most of the Republican governors, at least in my 35 plus years in Massachusetts, are self-described fiscal conservatives and social liberals. Would you describe yourself the same way? I would. I am fiscally conservative. Um, I worry about overspending. I'm, I worry about waste and fraud. And I worry about making sure we get the, the most for every dollar that our citizens pay through their taxes. That's only half of the descriptor. The second half is social liberal. Do you think that fits you too? Yeah, I do. I think I'm a moderate man. I think I'm sensible, a common sense. I realize that everyone has different life experiences and I would uh, approach the job with that perspective. But am I not right that your position on abortion is only exceptions for rape and incest? Is that not where you are? Yeah, you know, I'm pro-life, but I also recognize it's in the state constitution. I have no intention or interest in ever making a change to it. Well, if you were governor when uh, Charlie Baker had the DOE Act put on his desk, which expanded uh, abortion rights, I think it was in late 2020, he vetoed that and it was overridden by the legislature. Would you have vetoed the DOE Act? Yeah, you know, it, um, it, this is one of those issues where the citizens' interests and what the citizens want, I think the governors need to reflect what it is that our citizens would like. Um, and I think what they ended up doing by uh, putting through the veto ended up being added into the Constitution is now set in our state. Well, it's a statute. It's not a constitutional change. But let me be clear. Would you have vetoed that expansion of abortion rights like Governor, Governor Baker did? Yeah, I would have followed Governor Baker on that. So... To be clear, should the situation present itself, you would oppose any expansion of voting rights, uh, abortion rights. I just want to be clear. Is that correct? Yeah, I would. Again, I would follow Governor Baker on that. You voted for Donald Trump, I've heard you say on television in 2020. Why? You know, I thought his policies began to make a lot of sense to me, particularly as I've mentioned, the Chinese trade practices were really difficult on my business and particularly on my customers' businesses. And I was grateful that someone eventually stood up to the Chinese and said, hey, we've got to have a fair field here for us to play on. And my understanding, I think it was on Channel 5 you said recently, you were asked if you'd vote for Donald Trump, should he be the Republican nominee in 2024? And your line was, typically, I always vote along party lines. So that means you would vote for a man who was impeached twice, a man who a judge in California was a coup in search of a legal theory, a guy who I think credibly has been charged or at least accused of leading an insurrection. You're comfortable having that kind of man be the president of the United States again? Well, as I said before, is that historically and typically I vote along party lines. That's been typical for me. But you voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. She's not a Republican. Yeah, it's, it's typically. I mean, I try and look at every situation as best I can. And, uh, you know, as I've mentioned, when uh, when Donald, when President Trump first came on the, the scene, uh, his tone was a little harsh for me. It was a little difficult for me to get my mind around. But he but again, if I may, just briefly, Chris, he the evidence is mounting that he led an insurrection. He continues to lie to the American people about how the election was stolen. That's you're not worried about the danger to democracy of another term of that, that individual? 
Well, you know, as I've said many times on the camp trail, these are not the issues I'm running on. Uh, I believe that there are some immediate problems in our state that the press asks me these questions all the time, but, the, but I'm out campaigning. This is not what the citizens are talking about. They're talking about high cost of living here. I hear from business owners every day that they're planning on leaving our state because they just can't afford to be here. These are the real life kind of heart wrenching stories that I'm hearing out on the campaign trail. And I think we all need to pivot a little bit and say, let's talk about those issues because around the kitchen tables, people are hurting. They just, you know, financially they're hurting. The inflation is out of control, the cost of living in our state. So I hope the press begins to pivot and say, you know, that's old history. That's a long time well, it's ago. It's not history. He's thinking of running in 2024, but let's pivot since you mentioned it. What could you as governor do about inflation in Massachusetts? Well, not much on inflation, but certainly right now we have, uh, we're the second or third highest cost of living in America. Yeah. For, for our businesses, we are the most expensive state in the country to operate a business. How many more businesses can we lose before we all say, hey, it's time out? Also, I, I, I genuinely believe that the next governor will have to get us through a recession, and it could be a very serious recession. So I think we have to get our balance sheet in order. We've got to pay down our debt. We have to get ready for that. And we've got to keep our businesses from leaving. How would you rate Governor Baker's eight years in office, Chris? Uh, you know, I'm not here to rate anyone. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think I would like to build on the things that have worked that he's implemented. I think that uh, we, we would build on things that are working and we would, I'd bring my own perspective and my own view of the world to the job. And, um, you know, I come from the manufacturing world, the working class yeah. families, you know, and I think I would have a real focus on what do we do for those, uh, the working families. Well, let's talk about one subset of working families. You chose a running mate who voted against, as a legislator, state rep, uh, against banning conversion therapy, which I assume people know is a discredited, dangerous procedure to attempt to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Why is that not a disqualifier, Chris Doty? Well, first, let me just say that I'm absolutely opposed to conversion therapy, and so is my running mate. We, uh, neither of us, uh, uh, our support conversion therapy that what I explained on TV is that the reason she opposed that bill is because there was specific wording on what a therapist could talk to their patient about. And she felt like that was an overreach that that we shouldn't interject government between patients and therapists. I understand that concept, of, but I looked up this afternoon, the vote on that measure that she voted against was 147 to eight. And in fact, three quarters of her fellow Republicans voted for the ban. So is the notion that she saw something that 95% of her colleagues, including 75% of her Republicans didn't understand? Well, I think uh, that was her record. That's she voted it that way. She explained it to me that way, that she was she was not supportive of conversion therapy, but just didn't like that language between a therapist and a patient. And uh, I understood that. So, Chris, uh, we have here at GBH have invited you and your opponent, Jeff Deal, to debate uh, prior to the primary. You're looking for a debate pre-convention, am I right? And by the way, you have accepted your, uh, uh, your colleague, your opponent, Jeff Deal, has not yet. Uh, you're looking for a debate pre-convention, is that correct? I would like lots of debates. Uh, I have a vision and plan for our state that I think will really resonate with the voters. I want to get it out. I'd like to shout it from the rooftops. Um, I want to take our state a, a specific direction, and I want the opportunity to debate it as often as I can. Here's what Jeff Deal's campaign manager said in response to your desire to have a debate before the convention. Mr. Doty has yet to achieve the 15% vote of delegates required at the GOP convention in order to proceed past that, nor has he gathered the requisite number of signatures to make the ballot in November. So the discussion of Republican primary debates is premature. Are you able to say now that you have the support of 15% of the delegates and you have the 10,000 signatures necessary to qualify for the ballot in the fall? You know, I think we'll be fine on signatures. We, uh, every day we're calling delegates, uh, trying to get to our 15%. So I'm very hopeful and we're working hard. Chris Doty, it's really good to meet you. I hope to see you a lot. And I hope there's a debate right here in the near future. Thanks so much I for your time. To to you. Chris, good Likewise, to meet you. Thank Bye. You. you can find our past interviews with the other candidates for Massachusetts governor, Republican Jeff Deal and Democrat Sonia Chang-Diaz and Maura Healy online at greaterboston.org.